TEDx Amsterdam award ceremony is uh, very simple. First, we're going to uh, listen, uh, nee, we're going to look at the winner of last year. So we're going to look at the video of the wind drinker. You might have heard of it. Our world is facing a massive problem. Over 900 million people lack access to clean drinking water. Crops fail everywhere. People die because of it. And energy and food prices rise by the day. This is all caused by devastating droughts, especially in the poorest regions of our planet. So we had an idea. Let's combine a windmill, a water pump, and a cleaning system. The result? A cheap, simple, and reliable technology that lasts for decades. We call it the wind drinker. This sustainable and zero emission windmill turns groundwater or seawater into fresh drinking water for anyone who needs it. But every situation is different, so we developed special software that designs a custom model for each location. In this way, we can build cheap and very efficient wind drinkers. And it shows. Our first prototype will produce an average of 25,000 liters of healthy, fresh drinking water per day. That's enough for at least 5,000 thirsty people. So we design, transport, and build the whole thing, but that's just a start. We'll also stimulate local entrepreneurship, provide capital, and educate locals to use the mill. So this project is not just about water. It's also about much more. We could use all the help we can get. So please consider supporting Wind Drinker because water should be affordable for everyone. So here to tell us more about the Wind Drinker and what winning the TEDx Amsterdam Award brought them is Carla Generaal. Thank you. Believe in the power of enablement. That's the main message I'd like to bring across today. What I mean by that is that by enabling people to grow, to make them see their opportunities, but also to build on these opportunities, we can jointly tackle the world's biggest problems. The story of the wind drinker, of what we read till date, has all to do with enablement. Our success is directly related to the effort of all people involved, all volunteers and the entire local community who were unconsciously aware of the main message I have today, believe in the power of enablement. Last year, I was standing here as well. You voted us the winner of the TEDx Amsterdam Award. You enabled us to build onto, on our dream creating, establishing the wind drinker concept. Together, we were able to go to Somaliland and to create this concept, to realize this concept. It was really a great, great success. So what we, what we did was we used the wind energy, we, uh, we used the wind energy to drive a pump, that, that's what you saw in the animation just now, this impressive animation, which was also made possible by the TEDx Amsterdam community. So what happened is that we didn't do this on our own. We did this together with the TEDx Amsterdam community, but also with many other people. The TEDx Amsterdam community enabled us to work together with all people, like the, the makers of this animation, on how to uh, yeah, on, on how to establish this concept. So we used wind energy to drive a pump to, that pushes water to a membrane and in a way uh, filters that water. So you leave the water at one side and get the fresh drinking water at the other side. So that's the idea. But the unique thing about the wind drinker is that it's very easy to maintain and operate, even for the local people. So uh, local people can use it by themselves. But this is not only about uh, the, the technology. 
We believe in development through entrepreneurship. We believe that you have to offer more than just the technology. So we decided to also bring them the education of how, how, how to maintain this windmill, how to operate it. So next to, next to that, we also provided them uh, the, the finance. So we, we gave them the opportunity to uh, yeah, generate the funds to establish these wind drinkers. So the wind drinker concept is based on three items, finance, education, and technology. And with these three levers, we enabled them, the people in Somaliland, to build on their own future. So where you enabled us to create and develop the wind drinker, we enabled them to build on their own future. And the people in Somaliland, they were willing to learn. They were able to build on their future on their own. So as you can see here, my colleague Sjoerd went to Somaliland to install the wind drinker. It ended up with the local Somali people hanging on top of the windmill with the safety harness on, getting the final pieces together. And they succeeded. But as you might expect, in projects like these, not all went according to plan. We had to deal with a wall that fell down. We had to deal with uh, yeah, non-fitting parts of the windmill vanes. We had uh, yeah, a drill that wasn't powerful enough, or just in general, missing or non-fitting parts. But what was most striking about this is that the people in Somaliland were actually able to deal with these problems by themselves. So although it caused us delay, it also taught us one important lesson. They could really solve these issues as well. Of course, we guided them where necessary, but even when we as a team weren't in Somaliland, they were able to, to solve these issues and to build on their own future by themselves. And they, they were able to enable their uh, their, their communities to develop. So they, with the clean access to the clean and affordable drinking water, they could really improve their living standards of their own communities. We also did a, vitam, a, a trial. So we, we had an information meeting and we experienced the eagerness of the community to get to know the wind drinker. Also, the so we also experimented with the vitamins to see how they would react to that. And it was actually really a success. So we are also thinking of adding in the next stage the vitamins to the water to increase their living standards even more. The interest of the wind drinker is not limited to Somaliland. It's actually we received interest from all over the world. So, for, for example, from Mozambique, Peru, but also from South Somalia, where the issue, where the drought is such a big issue today. So today, we are actually almost there. The windmill is running currently. You can actually see that on our website. All items are in place. And also, uh, in two days, one of our colleagues, Bas, is flying to Somaliland to get the final pieces together. In two, in two weeks, we will have a fully operational wind drinker, which is really a really special thing. We're really excited that we as a team could, could realize this in one year. And it has all to do with the support we received from you guys. You were able, you enabled us to really make this and bring this project to the next level. We are really grateful for that. So you are also able to be part of this special moment. You can follow us on our website, on Twitter, on Facebook, and you can be there. And don't forget, believe in the power of enablement. Thank you well. Carla General. So the wind drinker was the wind drinker was the winner of the TEDx Amsterdam Award in 2010. Let's move on to 2011. Um, we decided to team up with the Volkskrant. Together with the Volkskrant, we've asked you to send in your projects. And boy, have you sent in your project. We've seen hundreds of ideas worth doing. These were all sent in, and our jury selected 10. We have 10 nominees. They were all judged on three simple criteria. Was it inspiring? 
the, <laughs> uh, was it an idea for the greater good? And three, is it an idea that actually needs help other than financial support? So these were the three criteria on which the nominees were judged. And right now we're gonna look, uh, we're gonna take a look at a video of the 10 nominees. Yes, it's a project um, we, what we like to do is to, uh, to make meat, the taste, the structure um, of meat um, without uh, an animal. Equal rights for everyone, including people with a handicap. That's what I'm fighting for. My uh, project is about bamboo. I and my idea is to plant bamboo on industrialized wasteland. One Percent Club is an online platform that connects smart ideas in developing countries with money, expertise and, uh, and uh, skills worldwide. Our project's about urban agriculture and creating food systems within the metropolitan area. Uh, we um, are setting up uh, uh, mobile phone-based campaigns on uh, AIDS prevention in Africa. The name is Weagle and we would like to set up a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing network, uh, which means that neighbours and friends can conveniently rent their cars to each other. We came up with Audi Touch. Four applications that are based on currently used validated analog methods to distinguish autism. Well, um, we're starting a new um, like social banking platform called PayPal, in which we're going to try to make people start saving money again. My project is about uh, the relationship between litter, litter on the streets, and plastic soup. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> Ten really remarkable ideas. Who's going to win? What do you think? Pauti. Vegetarische slager. He was very smart, the vegetarian butcher, because before he gave his presentation, he actually gave us something to eat. And we as a jury were very hungry. <laughs> it was tuna salad on toast and uh, chicken satay. And we, we tasted it, perfect. And he said, this was, it wasn't meat. So it wasn't tuna, it wasn't. Perhaps he's gonna win. Uh, but before, uh, before we know who is uh, the winner of the TEDx Amsterdam Award 2011, um, we at TEDx Amsterdam really fought really hard who was qualified enough to announce the winner and hand the trophy to our winner, because it is, this is the Oscars of TEDx Amsterdam, right? But then for a second we looked at our first row and we immediately knew who to ask. She flew in all the way from New York to be with us today. She works at TED conferences in New York. Uh, she is the TEDx director, which means that, well, basically, she can go to all the TEDx conferences around the world and get paid at the same time, which sounds like a dream job. Please welcome to the stage, Lara Stein from TED Conferences. It's so great to have you with you. us. Thank Only you. Only it was as simple as that. <laughs> so I'm going to make this really brief. Are you going to tell us a bit more about the TEDx program in general? I'll tell you a little bit, but I know I'm standing between you and the prize. Okay. But this has really been an extraordinary day, and I feel very privileged to be here. I've tried to come every year, and I have not made it until this year, so I'm, I'm truly excited to be here. 
So TEDx started off as a little experiment two and a half years ago. And at the time, we at the TED office thought maybe you know, 10, maybe 20 people would show up and host a little TEDx event. And it really wasn't until TEDx Amsterdam 2009 when Jim did the first TEDx Amsterdam that we realized the incredible ambition, passion, and just commitment that was going to be going into some of these TEDx events. And truly, we were absolutely blown away. And so two and a half years later, we've had about 3,000 TEDx events. There are about 1,500 more planned. In Europe, we've had about 640, and there are about an additional 600 planned. And in, in the Netherlands alone, I think there have been about 41 events with about 40 more planned. And I think Jim has done nine of those events. So truly, truly mind-blowing. Um, so I do get to travel to quite a few of these TEDx events. And, um, I've been to a TEDx event on a floating hotel actually a year ago in the middle of the Amazon forest. We've had TEDx events in shanty communities in Kibera. And as you saw, there was just a TEDx event in Baghdad. And I think what's extraordinary to me is no matter which TEDx event I go to, there is this incredible community. There is you out there over and over again throughout the world, a group of people that really are committed to the concept of ideas and the belief that great ideas can change this world. And that's really the binding connective tissue between all these TEDx events that continues to really blow me away. And so I guess the one thing that makes TEDx Amsterdam really different from all the other TEDx events I've been to is all along Jim has had this commitment to the concept that it can't just be about people standing on the stage and talking about their ideas. It really does have to be about a commitment to doing something. And so he really took this idea of, of ideas worth spreading and made it into this amazing concept of ideas worth doing. And so now it's my great privilege to announce the second ideas worth doing Winner, and I've never done this before, so I'm really nervous. I feel like I'm at the <laughs> Academy Awards. <laughs> We're all learning at, uh, at this time, I can tell you. Uh, let's see if you have a slide of the 10 nominees uh, on screen. There they are. Okay. This is going to be exciting. If, if we could only ask for a drum roll. Could you uh, take your feet? Oh, yeah. oh, this is much better. Yeah. Ooh, anticipation rises. This is exciting. Could we have an envelope? Oh, my. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the winner of the Ideas Worth Doing 2011 Awards is John Epsos with Matt Farm. Matt Farm! Woo! He's done really well. Thank you so much. Gonna shake his hand. Congratulations, winning the award. Yeah. Well, right now you get six minutes to give your TEDx talk about what your project is about. Okay. John Apesos. Clicker? You got a clicker for me. Yeah, a lot of clicking. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's heavy. <laughs> that is the best part. No, yeah, yeah, that's go. one. All right. Can you get the first slide up? All right. So, uh, seven billion people were born this month. And for most of us, myself included, this very pertinent fact in our world has sort of faded away in my memory. Let's go on with my life. So I'm going to start this story where I'm from, Ohio. It's right there right on the map. <clears throat> now, I've been all over my state. And I'm going to take you on a little trip. So in Ohio, agribusiness is big business. It represents $93 billion in our state's economy every single year. We produce $7 billion eight. So that's one for everybody. Now, what do we grow? Corn. Fields and fields of corn and soybean. And speckled in between these corn fields are our cities. Turn of the century industrial powerhouses. John D. Rockefeller founded Standard Oil at the, at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in Cleveland, Ohio. So it's fair to say that our economy 
It's pretty lubed up with the stuff. And we are connected. You can drive to New York City, Miami Beach, or San Francisco Bay without changing highways. So, this is my Ohio dilemma. When you take a space of land and you maximize it for food production, and it becomes as efficient as it can be, and there's some parks and stuff, how do you make more food for the coming people? What can you do? So while some people are worried about peak oil and dependency on fossil fuels, I am terrified of peak food production. Today, globally, we use 16 million square kilometers for our croplands. And we use 30 million square kilometers for our pasture lands, you know, where the sheep and the cow you know, go out there and graze. Now, put together, agriculture uses 60 times more land mass than suburban and urban areas combined. And this system uses billions upon billions upon billions of liters of water every single year. So, how do, we, how do we feed the coming people without destroying the planet? Since more and more people are moving to the cities, New York, Tokyo, Mumbai, and so forth, let's take food production and move it to where the next billion people will be. Simple, right? Now, there are a lot of ideas around the vertical farm, and there are many dreams out there. This is one for a, a centralized vertical farm in uh, Manhattan. I'm going to show you a decentralized model. Behold, the farm of the future. <laughs> we're going to use empty commercial real estate, and we're going to retrofit it with hydroponic and aeroponic technology. Now, hydroponics literally means working water. This is a very developed technology already. It's pretty much proven. So we're going to use what we have to try and build something new. So what does plant growth depend on? Well, it actually depends on five major factors. Air, light, water, nutrients, and growth media. That's it. When you optimize these factors, you can optimize plant growth. You can start to predict taste, play with taste. You'll be able to have a harvest that's on your call. So let me show you some of the technologies that make this possible. Now, these are LED lights used to grow strawberries here. Now, this light might seem a little bit strange to your eyes, but if you're a green plant, you, met, you absorb the most amount of energy through red and blue light and a little bit of far red. So this is the new stuff that's on the market. This is a total growth system. Now, this is NASA-developed aeroponics te technology. Now, NASA developed this for the space travel. But there's companies, clever companies like uh, Aerofarms that are bringing these systems to Earth today. Now, back in Ohio, it takes 60 days to grow a head of lettuce. These guys can do it in 20. Enough about me and my passions. This is about you. I want you to think about your life. Consider a world where your food travels 20 kilometers instead of 2,000. With a local for local vertical farm, your, your, food can be your food miles can be reduced from transatlantic to your neighborhood. Unfortunately, today, most of the fresh food in our system is wasted in the chain. And most of this happens in your home. And this is not your fault. This is the system's fault. This summer in the Netherlands, your food will be grown in Spain and Morocco, will be put on a boat, sent to the port, sent to some regional distributor, and then to your market. And then you get it. After a little while, a little fungus, a little mush, a little rot begin to form, and you throw it away. It's understandable. You and me, the consumers, we throw rotting food away. But you should be the first person to get your food after a grower, maybe the second. With local for local farming, you, your food can be picked to plate in hours, and nothing tastes better than fresh. It's time we face the other inconvenient truth. There is a global crisis in agriculture today. I was personally inspired by the words of Carolyn Steele, architect, food urbanist, TED speaker. 
She summarized the crisis like this. We are just as dependent on gas-guzzling, chilled plug-in, just-in-time food deliveries as the ancient Romans were on foreign conquests, shipping, and slaves. And our system is no more secure, it's no more ethical, and it's no more sustainable than Rome's was. <laughs> I believe that Amsterdam can be the cradle for the third green revolution. The technology within the Netherlands for horticulture supersedes anything else going on in the world today. Picture a world where tomatoes taste Italian while being grown in town. One day, or next year, I hope to be invited back <laughs> to tell you that the first, the first indoor trials have been both a commercial and a social success. Who in the audience today will be the magnifying glass to help accelerate this process? Who wants to be a part of the next green revolution? The Netherlands did this with flowers. Why not food? Thanks for listening. Yeah. Huh. Congratulations, man. Please stick with us. OK. Your moment. Yeah. You did well. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jana Pesos, you just won the TEDx Amsterdam Award 2011. You got a standing ovation from the audience. Pretty good, yeah. Pretty good, he yeah. says. <laughs> but one thing is lacking. This is going to be his moment. Because winning the TEDx Amsterdam Prize isn't just about the trophy, I've said it before, it's your chance now to connect with the audience. You felt the energy, they really want to help you. And in the Netherlands we have the saying, men durf te vragen, dare to ask. If you are inspiring and you know what to ask for, chances are that people are very pleased to help you and offer what you just got for the... Can you give me some highlights, some things that you're looking for to bring your dream Mm -hmm. to reality? Well, I don't think this is going to be a, uh, a single entrepreneur. My, um, I have a business partner, Masood Hussain, and we're working together on this. And in our vision, there need to be a lot of growers. So if this is a message that moves you, and you're interested in doing something different, then we'd like to speak with you uh, with whatever your skills may be. And you might become an urban farmer, and that might be pretty cool. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but. Uh, it, it, it has to be more tangible. You look for people who think differently? No, you, you need something else, I guess. Yeah. How can we help you? Sure. Uh, is there anyone from the utilities that wants to help with the spring of a new industry? Is there anyone from uh, government who wants okay. to address the, uh, the zoning issues that let's will slow things down? Let's put your house lights up, please, for a moment. <laughs> yeah, let's put your house lights up. Who has something to give to this person that will bring his ID Third, I see there somebody with a beautiful yeah. light. Can we have a microphone up uh, to the gentleman over there? Yeah. Yes. Could you uh, could you give us your name, your organization, and what you will offer, Jonah Pesos? My name is uh, Robban. I'm an uh, I'm a grower. Robban, yes. I make uh, microgreens. Maybe you've tasted the uh, downstairs. From Corporate Cress. Mm -hmm. That's me. Thank you so much. Yeah. And um, thank you. <laughs> I we had a discussion already. And because I heard his dreams and I said, wow, okay, you have to learn a lot of things because growing is not just selling stories. No. And being a <laughs> farmer is something else than in Ohio just pumping up those things over there because the greenhouse <laughs> growing is a different story. And Amsterdam is a lot about growing, but they grow different stuff over here in the greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, different stuff. But yeah. I'm okay. willing to help you. Uh, but... <laughs> We're going to have a lot of discussions because I don't okay. fully agree with everything on what you're saying. You found yourself the perfect mentor. Great. Great. Thank you, Thank Rob. you. Thank you very much. More. More people. I see there. Yeah. Thank you. Please give me your name and your organization. Yeah. Hi, I'm Samuel Levi um, from the Youth Food Movement. Youth Food Movement? Oh, yeah. I've seen you on stage. Yeah, we somewhere. were last year actually pitching our academy, which is an inter interdisciplinary training uh, for young people uh, who are ambitious in food, right. um, and we would offer you the first place in our academy for the coming year. Wow. So wow. if you're up for it, we would be happy to host you. Thank Definitely. you so much. Definitely. We need more. Thank you. Time's ticking.
I see you on the balcony. Yes, please give me your name and your organization. My name is Erwin Lindier. I'm from the municipality of Almere. And uh, yesterday I was talking with someone from the Sustainable uh, Area Development Organization platform in uh, the Netherlands about how uh, setting up an, um, an organization to get more out of surface area, to make surface area more profitable than it is, because in Amaira we have lots of area. Right. Okay. <laughs> and we have a horticulture industry, so uh, this combination could be very nice. Okay. So I'd like to get in touch with you. Let's talk, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Great. Move on. I see a lady here in the audience, a lady in the second row. Oh, yes. oh, we have a microphone already? Yes. Can you tell me your name? The American has the microphone. Watch out. <laughs> yes, me. I'm Greg Shapiro. Uh, you may know me from the Voice of the Wind Drinker video. Um, <laughs> so, uh, happy to help out. Uh, so, John, yes, uh, from Illinois to Ohio, uh, yeah, as we, we can do better. The third green, if the third green revolution happens by Americans in Amsterdam, I would be proud. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I guess I'm a connector, perhaps. Uh, so, I mean, please tell me you know uh, Kvirain Bolle from Markt. Uh, not so long ago, you know he him? was winning the award for oh. Amsterdamer van het Jaar right there. I, I shopped there. Yeah, well, <laughs> you should meet the owner, because he's going to want to have your stuff. You're going to introduce him? Yeah, yeah, I would introduce you to that. Uh, my daughter was just in a school, uh, you know, looking for space where we can grow our own stuff that's not raining and making everybody sick. Uh, a number of schools are going to be interested in uh, getting kids doing the farming. Uh, and I have connections at uh, Gemeentehuis uh, City Hall as well, who, for, literally, anti-crack is a big issue. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> let's put it to good use. So three connections. Make sure I <laughs> tell you all of them. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank, right. thank you, Greg. Very much appreciated. Uh, the microphone is over there. Could you please stand up? Could you give me your name, your organization? Is it working? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My name is Simone de Jong. I'm from Delft University of Technology. We hosted a TEDx event uh, just a couple of weeks it ago. It was wonderful. And one of yeah. our speakers was Rolf Hutt. He told, him, he told that he was a tinkerer. I think that it describes very well the kind of people we have in Delft. We have people who can make things work, tinkerers. So I think you can uh, use a lot of help with our scientists, our engineers to make this work. Oh, that sounds wow. great. I'm, I'm an MBA, so uh, I can't really make anything, so that'd be terrific. <laughs> <laughs> You're a thinker. There's a thinker. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So, we have uh, the microphone just, here, just, please. Yeah. We have three hands. Yeah. yeah. Ladies first. Yes. Could you please stand up? <laughs> okay. We only have one minute left. Yes, yeah. your name. I'm Anita from Sanoma Media, and this is Annette, and we both um, can also offer something. Also from Sanoma Media, from I guess. Media. Yes. Also from Sanoma Media? Also from Sanoma Media. So what are we going to offer? We, we can uh, see what we can offer as, uh, in, um, uh, of, uh, for publicity in our magazines, in our websites that we run. All right. To make this uh, a bigger idea. And is that <laughs> advertisement or bring publicity? Uh, Editorial, pre -publicity. yes. Okay. Bring it to the public and maybe if you have some nice recipes from the food you're going to make, that oh, would yeah. be great to publish for us. <laughs> Terrific. All right. Thank you so much. This media power. There's a gentleman at the front row. Can you give me your name? Hi, my name is uh, Jan van Betten, Nudge. I'll be your Nudge. first oh. customer. Hey, wow. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, not, not only that, uh, we okay. represent a platform of, a growing platform of now today 17,000 sustainable customers. Wow. wow. And I think we can do something for you because they're all going to buy with you. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jan. I see the microphone is up there. Who are you? Oh. <laughs> well, Rogier van der Heijden. Thank, thank you. you for a really wonderful concept. At Philips, uh, for the past three years, we have been researching the light recipes for the different vegetables and, and, and other plants. Like, what is cool. the best light for spinach, for tomatoes, for everything else? We're going to share all these research with you. This wow. is amazing. Wow. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> That's really amazing. <laughs> and I, I want you to become our test bed so we can make it real. And uh, I'll get you in touch with our horticulture venture. Yeah. There you go. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. I'm so sorry. We have so little time. We have to last. Could you give me your name? Okay, I'm Andre Pohm of Clean Light. 
please. And we work on crop protection by uh, UV, low resolution light, and I would like to have contact with you. Thank you. All right, very much Thank appreciated. You. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Okay, John, All right. you are going to be <laughs> the number one person to talk to during the, during the drink. So uh, I'm sorry, time is up, but I think you already had some really great suggestions, and this will continue during the, uh, the borrow. All right, yeah? perfect. Thank hey. you so much, man. Hey, thanks, Jim. Okay. John right. Apesos. Thanks. You can take it with you. He's so modest. It's your trophy. Enjoy it. <laughs>